and this is Russ Anderson. In this tutorial, I'm going to take a look at some of the capabilities of the new place button. And that's kind of a very simple button, automatic button for people to use initially. But it also has some more subtle capabilities for more advanced users. So here I just uh, solved this scene. And I'll point out, I could have already had that auto place run automatically if I turned on this uh, preference box down there. But uh, I've got that off, so I'm going to hit this the first time. And now you see over in the camera view, you'll see these trackers that have the little coordinate axes on them are the ones that have been used as part of the ground plane. And this auto place button can determine a ground plane or a sidewall, a back wall, depending on what it finds. And here you'll see that there are a couple that are up in the air a bit. And part of the issue here is we've got things that are down in front of the curb and some things that are back behind it. So that kind of contributes a little slant. And back there, I think it's going to be a bit higher. So the first thing to know is that you can just keep on hitting the place button a couple of times, and it'll keep on going and giving you different possible options for the coordinate system assignment. And a lot of times there are you know, a bunch of different possibilities that are all very close in you know, relative merit. So this gives you a way to, to take a couple different shots and decide uh, what, what you'd like. So if, that, uh, if you want a different approach, if you want something that's a bit more specific, you can just go and select some trackers in the view. So let's just select some that we like. And you know, sometimes it might be just some particular area of the scene that we're interested in concentrating on, and there's a lot of other stuff involved as well. So we can hold down the shift key and hit place. And that tells SynthEyes just to consider those pre-selected set of trackers when it goes to locate the ground plane or sidewall or back wall. So that immediately cuts down the number of options that it's looking at and lets you ignore things that are problematic. If uh, you have used the place button already and you like pretty much what it's done, but there happens to be some particular tracker that you don't like being included, maybe it's a little higher than the rest or a little below or something, you can just do a shift select of it in the camera view to unselect it and then do a shift place again and get an updated version of the coordinate system assignment with that tracker eliminated. Now part of what the placement tool is doing is deciding what to use as the ground plane but it's also going and taking a look at the structure of the points to find the best orientation for the scene. And here it's, it's taken advantage of that one back wall and also a front wall across a couple of the buildings to orient the scene and also to set it up so that that particular intersection comes out as the origin of the coordinate system. So that actually is a pretty nice approach that tends to capture some of the structure of the scene when it when it has something for synthize to find. So now let's go take a look at another scene. And again we're gonna do a solve on it to start. But before we rush to do the place button, let's take a look at it and over here, down at the ground level, there are a couple of trackers that are just right at that, both sides of that uh, supporting piece there. So maybe we have some measurement from the set that we'd like to use to control the size of the scene. So to take advantage of that with the place mode, we need to set that up before we run the place button the first time and I just held down the Alt key, it would be Command on Mac, to link those two trackers together. Here I've got Tracker 98 linked to Tracker 75, 
and we'll say maybe it's uh, four meters or four feet apart. You know, I could use a meters value, whatever. Synthize never cares about the units per se. So I set up that distance. Now when I go back and I do the place, it is going to take advantage of that number to set up the scene, the scene's overall size. Now in this particular scene, I've got this wall that's uh, got the bend in it here to do this uh, diagonal portion. So rather than aligning with one part of the wall or the other, since I've got kind of an average part that uses some of those trackers along the wall. Now there are a couple of possibilities for what we could do here. Uh, one would be to just select some of them and we could do our shift place here and now we get those used as a back wall. But another possibility, you know, no matter how we've we've done it, is that with the this particular method, we can actually go and now do a manual alignment very easily. So I just went to this 3D panel, I turn on this whole button. And the whole button allows me to move not, not just the camera on one particular frame, but the entire scene. So let's go and rotate the entire scene. So now I just pulled it to bring that one back wall into alignment. And maybe I want to go and bring the whole thing so that this corner here is at the origin. So I can just go and move the whole scene around. And if you notice over in the camera view, nothing's really happening because everything is staying perfectly lined up. So I can do that either in the uh, view over here or sometimes if, if you need to adjust the ground level, say, you know, you can go and just hit one of those particular spinners so that you don't mess up some other axis that you like. You can just go and fine tune something. So that gives you a whole lot of control, final control, over what the coordinate system is. And now let's go back and, and look at the camera view and think about what these coordinate axes mean on the individual trackers that are used as part of the ground plane. Those are there, those are synthized standard indicators that say that that point is being used as part of a constraint. And so what's happened is it Synthize created constraints that, that just lock each of those points to the location that has been assigned to that point by the place button. So if I go and resolve this scene, even after I change some tracking, whatever, I'll get basically the same kind of coordinate system setup. If I change something around, it might be slightly different but I'm basically going to get the same coordinate system. So because of these constraints, it's a way to preserve your coordinate system, even if you mess around with things, so that once you've dropped some objects into the scene, maybe exported a few times, you don't want to have everything change around later. It's already kind of set up so that it's going to be fairly repeatable for you. And I'll just point out, finally, here's the uh, distance constraint, the distance for and it, it satisfied that distance constraint that you had set up initially. So that's a quick look at some of the different features in the place button. I'll point out that what, if you can, it, it's sort of always better to pick up a exact coordinate system set up using the star 3 button or uh, doing it manually and directly configuring the trackers on the coordinate system setup. Um, but this is this place button is a way to get something nice uh, a lot of times uh, pretty quickly and easily. And when you do that, or no matter what you do, whenever you drop something into the scene, you need to be sure to look at the surrounding trackers to be sure to locate the object properly so that you don't have sliding. Because sliding always means you've put something into the scene at the wrong spot. The place button gives you kind of an average version of the ground plane, so it's going to be nice and averagely right, but it's not necessarily going to be exactly right, right where you want to put something, so you should always take a look at the area right around what you're doing. Thanks a lot.